Um, who has released a game on Steam here? Hands up. Oh, okay. All right, we've got a fair number of that. <laughs> Wonderful. We all know releasing a game is the most difficult thing ever, right? And one of the things that you really want when you put your game on Steam is that your Steam, um, your, your game works with Steamworks API. And today, we've got GP Garcia here, uh, the creator and the maintainer of Godot Steam, the one plugin that I believe everyone uses. So, peeps, let's welcome him. Hi. Uh, if you don't know me, which I'm sure most of you don't, my name is GP Garcia, or better known online as Gramps. Um, and I welcome you to the most uncomfortable 30 minutes of my life, which is titled as Powering Your Godot Game with Steam, or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love Godot Steam. Uh, it seems Adam, who is giving a talk right now in the main room, and I had the same joke in mind, so clearly great minds think alike. Um, in fact, in this talk, you'll hear me say the phrases Godot Steam and Steamworks so many times that it'll eventually lose all meaning and start to sound like gibberish. And uh, also, please bear in mind that I am not a public speaker, so this will be a little rough. Uh, so without further ado, let's uh, dig in. For about the next 20 minutes or so, okay, I will ramble about you or ramble at you about things like Godot Steam, the how and the why, the various features that it has, uh, using Godot, uh, Valve Steamworks for your games, all the cool games that a lot of you here um, have made, uh, some new and upcoming features, and uh, my favorite part, the community that kind of surrounds it. Um, yeah, okay. As uh, some of you know, I've been working on a project called Godot Steam for about seven years, and uh, quite a few of you use it in your games. Um, to my knowledge, there are approximately 158 games using it, but there might be more. Um, what you might not know is that, uh, about how the project came about. Awesome. Um, so I started working on Godot Steam back in the day uh, because I needed a Steamworks solution for Godot 2. And um, back then, this was before all the plugins, all the fancy stuff that existed. Um, I was in the process of swapping engines from Pygame to Godot, and I had been looking at uh, alternatives, as I'm sure most of you have, Unity, Unreal, uh, Ogre 3D. Um, I think I'm going to slide ahead. Uh, I'm sorry, let me go back one. Okay, sorry about that. Um, and like a lot of people, I eventually landed on Godot. Um, I am by trade a Python programmer, so using GD Script is very easy to use. Um, and at the time, there were two very simplistic programs on GitHub for uh, Steamworks. Uh, one by a user called Madov. It was initially just um, initialization and achievements. It was forked some time in 2016 by a user named Kermer. And he had added some overlay functionality, some friends class stuff, um, a few other minor things. A little higher? Oh, right, sorry. Um, and that was the options we had back in 2016. Um, around that time, I was working on something called Steamworks Pi, which is a Steamworks implementation for Python. Um, and for my case particularly, it was Pygame. Um, after I jumped ship to Godot, I started looking at Madov's work and Kermer's work, and I uh, tried to figure out how to apply that to what I had been doing with Python. Um, so I was learning the ropes on how to create custom modules for Godot, um, and I really wanted to flesh out everything that Steamworks did. Um, it was mostly because it was something I needed in a lot of other developers I was talking to. So over the next few years, we'll steam ahead, um, I passed PyWork Steam off to, or Steamworks Py off to Philip, um, who now runs it, and I dedicated myself to GitHub Steam. Um, not really full time, but it's my main project. GitHub Steam is, as I've been calling it, a open source and fully functional Steamworks SDK slash API module and plugin system for Godot Game Engine. And yes, that is very hard to say in one sentence. Um, in less fancy speak, it lets you use all of Valve Steamworks in Godot. Um, it comes in a variety of flavors from pre-compiled modules to GD extension, GD plugin. Um, it works for Godot 2 through 4. 
Um, and if, in barring any kind of weird accidents or data loss, it should work um, for five and everything beyond that. Uh, there's a server version, which also has pre-compiled modules, plugins. Um, there are lots of example projects. We have a lot of documentation, tutorials, and we keep making more and more stuff for it. Um, okay. Uh, Godot Steam is one of three solutions that you have as developers outside of rolling your own, which um, sits it alongside cool projects like Steam Godot API by Sam Murray, a.k.a. Sam's Face. There's his GitHub if you want to check it out. And um, ERI team dot Steamworks by ER team, and there's their GitHub page. Sam's is a purely GD native plugin approach, and it has some really cool additions that we don't have for Godot Steam, like being able to just disable the plugin by default. With ours, you kind of have to write out the logic for cutting that Steamworks out. It can be kind of a pain. Um, and ER teams takes a takes heavy inspiration from Face Punch's C sharp implementations. So for all of you who have moved over from Unity and using C Sharp, it will probably be a little bit easier for you to use. Um, and I think there's this module only, they don't have any plugins yet. So if you're uh, not comfortable with compiling, that might be a thing. Uh, both of these projects are very awesome and they do things in different ways than we do them. And uh, if you're looking for solutions, I highly suggest checking out all the options. Um, Somebody recently asked me why Godot Steam, and honestly, I have no answer. Um, Godot Steam is not a product, it's not a service, and my feelings aren't hurt if you decide you want to use any of the other projects, totally fine. Um, I always say like people have preferences for tools, but you should use what works best in your use cases. Um, that being said, if you do use Sam's project or use ERA Teams project, and you still need help with Steamworks, feel free to reach out to me or any of the people in our community. Uh, most likely somebody will have an answer, and mine are not usually really great with networking. So uh, That brings me to my next point, which is Valve Steamworks. I was going to make a joke about if you are a game developer and you don't know what Steamworks is, then you are probably living under a rock, but I am that guy in so many different ways that it would seem kind of silly to make the joke, but I did anyways. Um, <laughs> Uh, in case you don't know what Valve Steamworks it is, what Valve Steamworks is, it is an API system for developers to integrate various features into their games and interact with Steam's client and different systems. This can be cool things like achievements, saving files to Steam Cloud, using Workshop for game mods, selling in-game items with inventory, uh, interacting with Steam Deck, leaderboards, rich overlay, um, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. I'm not going to like go into the full list of features, um, but there's a lot of them, and you can read about them on Valve Steamwork SDK website, which is here, um, or our documentation website. Um, in total, there's about 24 classes, packed full of functions and goodies, and all types of crazy things. Um, and uh, not trying to, you know, big up Steam too much, but um, it is one of the largest PC markets there is. Um, which means more eyes on your games, more possibility for revenue. Um, I'm a big fan of itch.io, um, but I don't know that their market share is quite there, but it's great for indie, indie games. Um, so if you're a developer looking to make a living off this, Steam's kind of your market. Um, there's Epic Game Store, of course, but uh, it's like a whole other thing, but the revenue cut is very good. Um, and despite having such a high revenue cut, which for those of you would be uh, who don't know, it's about 30%, Valve does actually dump a lot of that money back into improving things like Linux gaming, driver support, cool devices like Steam Deck, VR. Um, and they've done actually a lot for a lot of the gaming scenes, um, in addition to maintaining their SDK. Um, I'm scrolling on a really tiny screen, so that's why I have these weird pauses. Um, in addition to the main SDK, if you're not aware, there is a uh, server SDK which is built primarily for dedicated servers. This is completely separate and um, we most recently released a uh, repo for it. Um, and we're working on, um, what do you want to say, like dedicated examples for it so you guys can kind of like see how it's put together and use it in your projects. I mean, that's obviously used for dedicated servers, master servers, Authenticating users, controlling stats and achievements. Um, there's a login anonymously, a login through uh, client accounts, that kind of thing. 
And the last thing to mention about Valve is their open source networking sockets. And this is released on GitHub. It is an open source version of their networking sockets class. And um, it is spearheaded by the wildly talented Fletcher Dunn, AKA Z post facto. And it is a non-platform specific basic transport layer. Um, it is uh, packed with all types of tools. You've got reliable and reliable messaging, encryption tools, tools for debugging, IPv6, peer-to-peer uh, -peer networking, NAT traversal. You can add your own signal service to it. Um, and as I mentioned, it's cross-platform. And it does not need Steam to work. So you can take this, put it in a game. You don't have to worry about Steam at all. Um, we do not currently have any version of this built, but I am working on getting a Godot Steam version so that this will be easier to just kind of dump into your Godot games and you don't have to worry about using Steam anymore. Um, let me see, where am I now? So that's all the good stuff in a nutshell, uh, kind of poorly explained. And I would be a little bit remiss if I didn't talk about some of the gotchas that some people fall into. Um, as I mentioned before, there's the 30% take if you don't release games yet, which I think is a little bit high considering most other markets, but we do get a lot of cool stuff in exchange for that. Um, I always thought that maybe they could do maybe more of a sliding scale, because if you're a top producer on Valve's Steam, you get like a slight cut, and I was kind of hoping maybe they could reverse that, and some of us indie developers could get a little bit of a cut up front, but that's okay. Oh, really? Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, so I guess I'm going to shrink this part down real quick um, and talk about a thing, the one more kind of gotcha that happens a lot of times when I talk to people is that um, when you're looking at their documentation online, do be aware that it's out of date a lot. They do not update it very often or very fast. Um, so if you ask me a question about why is the documentation say this, but you guys do that, it's because they didn't update their docs, but we do. And so always look at their header SDKs. Um, so, something that's kind of quick, I'm going to talk about games, because you guys love games, I love games, we all love games, that's why we're here. And there's a lot of really cool games that use Godot Steam, and I'm very honored to be part of their projects in some tiny little way. Uh, most folks use it primarily for achievement statistics, leaderboards, and all the basics. And these games include things like Atheris, Cat Cafe Manager, Hexes, Pistola, Resolution, Saturn Deluxe, Sispush, Turing Complete, and Wizard's Way Out these guys. There are people who leverage even more complex things like peer-to-peer -peer networking or remote play, which lets you play with people as if you were sitting together in the same room. Some small examples would be Catbox Paradox, Collect Requests, I Know Everything, Fishers, Non-Euclidean Chess, Rocketbot Royale, Squeebing Up the Tower of Friendship, Swords and Sandals Immortals, and Toil Quest Defense. Um, there's other games that use even more complex features like Workshop. A few examples would be Alien Traps and Treasures, Blastronaut, Dome Keeper, um, Indirection, Lingo, Luck Be a Landlord, Pokemon, Team Kill, and Underground. Um, and there's some that go even further than that, which is using inventory features, in-app purchases, Chicken Fight, Hellfire Tactics, Unnamed Space Idol. Uh, yeah, there are some games that are even living on the bleeding edge, which is using our thing called Steam Multiplayer Peer, and my only example is Drift by Chris here. Um, and last but not least, there are non-game tools with like Virtual Cottage, um, an RPG in a box. So, yeah, I've got the sad face. Um, so all these games have used Steamworks to actively engage your communities, um, other than, of course, having outstanding game content. I'm a little sad that I couldn't include every single cool game out here that I've um, seen and talked to people about. But we do have the full list of every game that I know about on our website. And if you don't know, I do shout outs every week, uh, basically every day of each game, one by one, alphabetically. And I try to plug everybody I can when I can. Um, if you have a game on Steam that's not on our list that I don't know about, feel free to talk to me here, send me an email, Discord, like, you know, Twitter, Mastodon, whatever you got. Um, what am I down to? We've got two minutes. Two minutes? Okay, we're going to go real fast. Uh, so roadmaps. I, there's a few roadmap features that I was going to talk about, but I'm just going to split it down to the one that everybody asked me about, which is networking. 
and is the thing I know the least about. And there's no way I'm going to cover this in two minutes. Uh, so Green Fox, if you're watching, I apologize. I couldn't, I couldn't do it. Um, so one of the things people ask about is how do we use Godot's um, multiplayer features with Steamworks? The short answer when you ask me that is you can't. They don't work. Uh, Enet is IP based and Steam networking is Steam ID based. But um, Green Fox started what we call Steam Multiplayer Peer, which allows those two things to actually work together. Um, and there's a lot of people who have been working on it. Uh, Green Fox, uh, Rafael Correa, Scripps Engineers, has a GD uh, extension version that you can use right now. Um, you can come to our website. We don't have any pre-compiled versions of it, but you can download our source code and compile it in yourself and use it. It's pretty good. And if anybody wants to know how it actually works in games, this man right here, Chris Ridenauer, he uses it in his game Drift, so he has working knowledge with how this works. I'm going to throw you under the bus real quick. Uh, let me zip ahead. One minute. Okay. Uh, I had a very big write-up about how all this works, and I had a whole bunch of slides, and I was going to go into detail about the whole technology behind it, and I have a very verbatim things from all the people who worked on it because I don't really understand it, but we're going to skip that because I don't have time. Um, let me skip ahead, skip ahead, skip ahead. I was going to plug draft in there too. Terrible. Um, I was going to talk about this. If you want to talk about these, GCC Uploader, it's a thing we're working on. We can talk about it later. Obviously, no time. Uh, uploader, is it time, Chris? And then, really quick, the community. I just want to give a shout out to my maintainers, my moderators Sapphire, Cat, Green Fox, Polygon Pi. And since I don't have time, I'd also like to kind of give a shout out to these guys who have been a really active part of our community, helping with pushes, bug fixes, talking to people, answering questions I can't answer, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, last but not least, thank you for your time. And I think there's a Q&A question. And hopefully you guys ask me questions I can answer. <laughs> Sorry for rambling. <laughs> OK, um, hands up. Who, who's got a question? Hey, are we using this on the Godot version that we publish on Steam? Do you think there's features we could use? And uh, have you spoken to anyone at the project to use this? About the official project? Yeah. The official Godot? Um, the only thing I know about was there was, um, what was it? There was, a, I think, a pull request to add like very minimal uh, Steam work usage for people who were downloading uh, Godot from Steam to keep track of their hours. Because I guess there's something about it where it doesn't track time correctly. Um, but I don't know, like, it's official things. I know they're doing, um, is it W4 is working on uh, console port stuff. Um, and if Godot wanted to take over Steamworks stuff, I wouldn't be opposed to it. <laughs> but I don't know if, like, anything, like, um, there's anything, like... Takeover, awesome. probably not. But uh, if you think... Like there's on the list of features, there's hmm. some things that could be useful in the editor, like a cloud save or something. Oh, like that. Um, I mean maybe. I mean most of your cloud save stuff is like you know like just game save files, but I don't know how useful it would actually be in the yeah. editor. But there might be um, UGC stuff that would probably be interesting for people. And the time tracking thing would be super useful. Yeah, um, and I, don't, I know it's in there, but I don't know if it's actually been merged in yet. They were more concerned with whether or not it was going to um, conflict with like Godot Steam or Steam Godot API and that kind of thing. There's a licensing thing. thing. This is oh, really? all proprietary and we're open source, so, but, yeah, you know. Valve was a little weird about a lot of us using things openly. Um, what were and what are the, um, the current, the, the biggest challenges while implementing the multiplayer peer uh, feature, <laughs> because I, I want to know the nasty things on on Steam side. Yeah, with the multiplayer for your stuff, uh, man, I don't know. Um, people always ask me networking questions. I'm not really a networking engineer. Um, I think a lot of the stuff that really can, is uh, like packet flow, like how to handle those kinds of things um, with the Steam multiplayer peer. Uh, not to like jump into the crowd, Chris. Is there anything you can think of that is like a kind of gotcha with that? 
uh, order of packets, like making sure the with like the multiplayer synchronizer, multiplayer spawner, those packets are coming in the correct order because that's like very. So if you're using C networking messages or C networking sockets, that can really impact that. So mm. yeah, it's that, that first like that first second or two of multiplayer is actually really difficult to get right. After that, it's pretty simple. So yeah, and it's because we're trying to take you know a lot of like the really cool you know uh, multiplayer nodes that or I, I don't say they're originally designed for ENet, but like that's how they work now. Yeah. And then we're trying to kind of like translate that into Valve's network, which is kind of completely different. Um, I'm still not totally up to speed. Like I haven't, like he promised me I'm gonna go sift through the code and kind of understand everything and write it all down. But um, I think packets is like the biggest issue they've had so far with that. Right. Any more questions? I have one. <laughs> so tangential but not direct. Okay. Uh, so do, you've done all this on the Steam side. Thank you so much for that. It's awesome. Mm. What are your thoughts on Epic Games Store and how they've been pushing that a lot recently? And as far as um, I, yeah. oh guys, Valve gonna hear this? Um, <laughs> I like a lot of what Epic Games Store has been doing, especially when it comes to indie developers, um, because like I said, I think thirty percent is like very high, especially for small studios. Like that, that's kind of like their income. Um, and I think, of, uh, sorry, Valve, that Epic kind of does offer us a better cut because I think there's like an exclusivity period of six months where you pay nothing, and then after that, it's about 12%. Um, I haven't looked too much into like their SDK stuff. Um, Green Fox, who's one of our moderators, has actually like been working on a, another version. I think somebody, maybe not here, um, actually has a project that does it. Um, I think it's really cool. Um, and I've been deep in this for so many years, um, but uh, yeah, I don't know if that answers that question. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, officially, the time is over. If there is another question, we could do one more question, and uh, if not, lunchtime. No more questions. <laughs> <laughs>